Thank you very much. My name much. is Matthew Warner. I'm a grad student at Liberty University. And I have <laughs> one, uh, one question. Going back to ethics and morality, you essentially said that the Darwinian <clears throat> uh, reason we have morality is that back in the day, you had cousins and people, and you wanted them to reciprocate. In order to act like that, you would have to make decisions. The decisions would have to be based on critical thinking. I was wondering if you have a Darwinian response or explanation for how critical thinking um, relates to Darwinianism. Right, I think I understand you. You're, you're, we, we, the question is not really about morality. The, the question is about, is there a similar Darwinian account of critical thinking? Which is at the basis of your explanation for morality, in my mind. Well, and my explanation for everything else, presumably, as well, not, not, not just morality. Um, <laughs> well, um, I mean... Crit critical thinking is, is something which um, isn't universally a, an attribute of the human mind. Um, <laughs> it's, um, uh, I, I don't think it's very, very hard to imagine, that, um, Im imagine ways in which critical thinking could have benefited the survival of our ancestors. I mean, I, I think that um, taking a a rational view of evidence would probably have helped our ancestors to survive in a world of saber-toothed tigers and ice ages and drying up water holes and all the other things which, all the other hazards which threatened life. Um, I would have thought rather the reverse, that the, the problem that faces us is how do we explain uncritical lack of thinking? Why is there so, such a lot of that about? Um, and uh, I, I mean, I do have a chapter I explaining that, but I should have thought that was a, that was a rather harder problem than, than the one about, about uh, critical thinking. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Carl Swenson, and um, I'm going to tip my hand right off the start, like the other brave questioners, and say um, <clears throat> that if, if theories and ideas around things like intelligent design and creationism are scientifically all but dead, they just haven't fallen over yet, um, then I see something else waiting in the wings scientifically that needs, that would could be a problem for science. And that's, and so I ask your opinion about this. Um, things like, um, you've used the word mind a lot. We think of mind as some dimensionless thing in the middle of our head which tells us what to do and is separate from the brain, um, which is similar to the soul, another popular notion. So what does science or philosophy at this point have to say about um, this? About the, about the mind, about... Yeah, about the existence of it. That uh, or the soul or the popular notions of it. Well, I, um, I mean, my, my, my view would be a materialistic one. Not everybody's would. And, and my, my view would be that uh, mind and soul and consciousness and all those sorts of words are... They, they describe something which is a manifestation of the material brain and doesn't have any existence outside material brains, where material brains could at some future date, perhaps, include silicon brains, not, not just neuronal brains. But there has to be some sort of uh, physical medium, doubtless highly complicated, highly interconnected, a network of, um, of complicated wiring diagram, uh, which, um, uh, by, by some means which neurophysiologists are now working on, results in the phenomena which psychologists study and which we colloquially give names like mind and even soul too. So I don't think that the mind is an immaterial thing that has any existence outside the material world. <laughs> 